The Northern Santa Cruz Mountains is one of the most geologically diverse wine regions in the world. As you can see, each of these small colored areas is a different geology. That's because as these two large plates collide, this is the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, there is a huge amount of, of different strata that's being pushed to the surface. And we see everything from limestone to all sorts of various shales, mudstone, sandstones. What Reese is all about is to illustrate those different terroirs and their effect uh, on, on the wines and their character in the wines. So each of our vineyards is located on a different geology. In particular, there's a couple of pairs that are interesting. There's the home vineyard and family farm pair, which are a, a couple hundred yards apart. There's essentially no difference in the climates between those two pairs. So the, they're really about soil. And that's because the home is sitting here on the North American plate and family farms sitting there. So their, their soil types are even further apart. It's because these two plates are so distinct, they don't share geology. The home vineyard sits on what's called Whiskey Hill Formation, which is a sandstone shale um, North American plate. Here we're tasting the two vineyards that are just across the San Andreas Fault from each other. The family farm would be a little more early maturing, a little less concentrated, more rose petal -y, yeah. uh, loamy, orange peel note. The home has much more of a dark cherry, minerally chiseled, deep um, character. And then there's Alpine and Horseshoe that are a couple hundred yards apart. Alpine is at 1,100 feet. Uh, to 1400 feet. Horseshoe is at 14 to 1600 feet elevation. And then Skyline, where we are right now, is 2300 feet, so mm -hmm. it's quite high. Basically, it's just a big rock pile. There's only about two inches of topsoil here. The rocky, shallow soils um, tend to produce ripe fruit with lower sugar. The soil at Alpine is a very soft marine shale, uh, young, very chalky feeling in texture. Our biggest vineyard is Horseshoe, where we have 17 acres of vines. Overall, in the Santa Cruz Mountains, between all five vineyards, we're at 42 acres. One of the interesting things about the Appalachian is it's defined by elevation. And a lot of people think that that's a climate thing. It's not a climate thing. It has a lot more to do with soil depth. And so by defining the elevation as above 600 feet, you're almost only including soils that are rocky, well-drained, and shallow, which are what make the world's best wine. So I think that's probably the great secret of the Santa Cruz Mountains, if you had to pick one thing in summary. Throughout history in the old world, uh, the vines were essentially untended, so all the quality pressure was on the site. People think of the Santa Cruz Mountains as a small appellation, when in terms of overall area, it's actually a large appellation. But in terms of vines under acre, it is a very small appellation. What that means is by having a small amount of vines that are spread out over a huge AVA, that all the wineries are pretty far apart. So there's not a lot of communication, which makes your observation even more fascinating. I think the reason that there's this common value system is because the region has such expressive wines and people see it and they realize, gosh, I, I'm not gonna cover that up with oak um, or, or other things that would make this wine you know, less expressive of, of this vineyard because it's so interesting the way it is on its own. In any case, we get powerful tannin, which means wine that uh, does take some time in the bottle but has very long life, much like French wines. It means the wines are powerful too. By keeping our wines naturally balanced and low in alcohol, we can really highlight the terroir much better. Mm -hmm.